Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of Rice 360 Institute for Global Health Technologies and Nest 360, today we're here uh, with a panel talking about transforming engineering education in African universities with the goal of solving local and global challenges. My name is Matthew Wettergreen, and I am the uh, Director of Global Medical Innovation Master's Program at Rice University. Uh, here today, we have four individuals who are going to share their stories about the development of design studios uh, for the goal of uh, invention education. Could we have each of the speakers please introduce themselves? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Will Moyo. I work with the design studios in Malawi at the Malawi University of Science and Technology and also at the Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences. Thank you. Williams, would you unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Williams Ba. I am the manager for the design studio at the University of Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you. Patrick, hello. Hello, my name is Patrick Casterly. I am the design studio coordinator at the University of Ibadan in Southwest Nigeria. And those of you who are in the audience, uh, if you wouldn't mind, please introducing yourself in the chat. And at any time that you have a question, please type it into the chat. At the conclusion of our presentation, we'll cycle back to all of those questions. Globally, pressing challenges persist in our communities. Invention and innovation are methods that we have to radically advance and address societal changes in a multitude of ways, which can include contributing to reducing poverty or saving lives through improved healthcare provision. Invention education as a method offers a powerful transdisciplinary approach to inspire and empower aspiring inventors and innovators. And through NAS360, RICE360's invention education program, inventors are challenged to identify problems and then further develop appropriate innovative solutions. This approach of problem solving models professional practice, it teaches teamwork, and it develops an entrepreneurial mindset. The overall model of invention education that Rice 360 and Nest 360 incorporates employs, incorporates four pillars. First, there's the classroom and curriculum, which includes the physical infrastructure and the methods of teaching, including active learning-based classes and project-based classes, where students surround each other while engaged in projects instead of simply passively absorbing lectures delivered by faculty. The second pillar of the invention education program is the technology development and commercialization, which helps to move forward technologies developed in these classrooms and seeks opportunities for delivering these solutions to global communities. Third, we believe in a co-development model where faculty from both US and African institutions teach each other research-driven practices in education. These three former pillars are surrounded by the fourth, which is support and partnerships, which bridges public, private, industry, and nonprofits to leverage these overlaps and deliver these technologies to communities. RICE 360 and NEST 360 work with partners all over the world. Some of the most rewarding and exciting work of my career has been in collaboration with these partners, the friendships um, that have formed and the growth we have all experienced as a result of our working together. Today, we are really excited to share with you some of the success stories and personal experiences in implementing invention education, which has resulted in empowering students and faculty innovators to solve some of these local and global challenges. And today you're going to hear from four individuals who have helped to build some of our design studios which are the hubs of the innovation education model. At the heart of invention education models are design studios. You may have heard of them called by a variety of names, maker spaces, academic maker spaces, fabrication laboratories. Um, design studios are equipped with rapid prototyping equipment and supplies, such as 3D printers, laser cutters, electronics, 
and they enable the creation of solutions to real world problems. At Rice University, I have personally seen design studios serve as a space for students to translate ideas into impact. And globally, we've seen the same thing from some of our partner design studios. Now, while design studios can exist in a variety of contexts, including low, middle, and high income settings, they can be started with very little resources as long as the community is the central aspect of the design studio launch. Of the three components of a design studio, people, programming, and prototyping tools, the people and the programming are the most important. And when people are starting a design studio, the best question is who should work here and what type of programming should we have, not what type of machines should we put in the space. For more information about starting design studios in a variety of contexts, I would urge you to look at this paper published by our group in the International Journal of Engineering Education, which talks about makerspaces and design studios and how they've developed in a variety of these contexts. Following the QR code on the bottom right can take you to a link for the paper. Let's hear from Williams Ba from the University of Lagos, who will talk about the launch of their design studio. Williams, would you unmute yourself and talk about the launching of uh, Unilag's design studio? Um, thank you so much, um, Martin, for the concise and clear definition of what a typical design studio should look like. Um, I think the big question that follows that has to do with what actually goes into the setup of one. Um, just like any other engineering um, project, um, setting up a design studio um, requires, you know, addressing some key factors before the actual implementation. So some of the pre-launch consideration that needs to be taken into consideration is um, to define the target impact. Um, you know, these are very important points and I'm fetching from the inference from the four design studios that we championed on the African continent. Um, at the heart of our goals is to provide um, on unhindered access to resources um, in terms of equipment, tools, and even um, human expertise to mentor um, young innovators. Also, we are looking forward to um, set up a mechanism that fosters collaboration among innovators and um, between faculties, institutions, both nationally and internationally. This is very important as we understand that uh, multifaceted problems cannot be solved in isolation, but rather requires individuals from different backgrounds to come together and collaborate and you know, provide adequate solutions. Now, after the identifying such targets, um, it is very vital to, add, um, to get to know the kind of challenges that is um, experienced at the intended site of um, of the setup. So for instance, taking um, University of Lagos as a case study, um, what um, we found out is that the problem has never been the lack of individuals with innate passion to profess solutions to the problems that are peculiar to this environment. But the challenge has always been the lack of a space, a conducive environment with the right resources to um, ensure that innovators can translate their ideas into physical products to solve problems. So it is very important in the process of launching a design studio to identify the problems that are experienced on the site. And this also flows very well into fitting needs within available budgets. And the good news here is that just like Matthew just pointed out, you do not actually need to break the bank to set up a, de um, a design studio or a maker space. We've seen place places where they have just a um, few equipment and they are making big impact um, in the society. So um, oftentimes the modus operandi has always been starting out with what you have and progressively um, expanding to meet the specific needs. Um, on, in terms of the pre-launch consideration, one of the key things that has to be, um, to be embraced is sustainability framework from start. And this is key um, as uh, design studio is supposed to be a place for um, solving problems um, um, for the long term. So again, for the studios that we run at our partner institutions, some of the things that we have considered to 
um, harness in order to ensure sustainability is by engaging in um, um, stakeholders, both internally and externally, and also partnering with organizations that share the same or similar goals. Um, one other thing that I would like to make mention is that when one intends to launch a design studio, oftentimes nine out of 10, um, it takes the fashion of adaptive implementation. And they, by this, what I mean is that whenever you're starting out, you do not necessarily start from the lane of the block to um, the roof. Um, per the experience that we've had so far, it's always by donation of, a, of an existing space, which um, most often is not uh, purposed for a design studio. So one has to get to the environment to get to see how to redesign the place to repurpose it for design studio. As you can see in this uh, picture, um, this was the space that was originally used for as an office space um, in University of Lagos. So we had to come in and repurpose the place for um, a design studio, as you can see in the picture on the right. Um, one last thing that I would like to touch in terms of um, launching a design studio is a robust um, platform with enormous resources that one can easily get started. And of course, um, from the impact that we have experienced at our partner institutions so far, we are certain that the only way to go in terms of um, making technological impacts on the continent is by the deployment of this kind of uh, design studios across our institutions. So the question may be that how do we get started? And that is why this tool comes in handy. We have a robust platform where one can have access to sample of um, design layout when it comes to a design studio, the kind of equipment that can get started, that one can use to get started uh, by in terms of launching a design studio. So um, the Invention Education Toolkit is a product from some of the finest minds in this space um, on the globe. And I am very certain that this is something that the entire continent um, as a whole have to take advantage of. And of course, use that as a means to you know, integrate this kind of spaces in, in, the, in the institutions across board. Thank you. Thank you, Williams. Um, I'd like to point everybody to the IE Toolkit as a resource if you are looking to do invention education or start your own design studio. The website for the Invention Education Toolkit is ive-toolkit.org. And as Williams mentioned, this is an incredible resource that's been created by individuals from all over uh, the world uh, to help transform education engineering education in Africa. Uh, now I'm going to uh, talk about how design studios are really the heart of an ecosystem that relies on the engagement of many multidisciplinary partners. And we've seen the importance of engaging these partners from the outset to support both technology design, translation, and ultimately commercialization. Let's hear from Patrick. Patrick, one of the first team things your team did in Nigeria was to engage partners by hosting a design competition at the University of Ibadan's design studio. Could you tell us a little more about how you did that and what that impact was? Sure, thank you, Matthew. Well, I first wanna give a little context about uh, Nigeria. Uh, so the unemployment rate in Nigeria is among the world's highest, especially among young people. And so for countries like Nigeria, it's critical that innovation and investment in emerging locally appropriate technologies are at the heart of the nation's development strategy. So because with the development of new businesses and industry come new opportunities for these graduating young people. And so there's not much value in providing marketable engineering skills to students if, they, if there aren't any avenues for these graduating students to exercise these skills. And this is where design competitions can play an important role in enhancing the broader benefits of the design studios. So last December, the University of Ibadan held the first annual University of Ibadan design competition. And students, final year students and graduate, graduate students from all of the engineering departments were eligible to take place and participate, were eligible to participate in the design competition. And so we had projects from a wide variety of different 
engineering disciplines. So some example projects for the design competition included an IoT device, which allows farmers to keep track of the locations of their cattle as they graze in the fields. We also had a project which was an automatic cleaning system, which removed dust and sand from solar panels. Uh, dust often builds up on outdoor surfaces when wind blows down from the Saharan desert. And we also had an infant incubator with a built-in battery backup system to address the frequent electricity back blackouts which occur at the local hospital. So as you can see from this uh, small collection of different projects, these are local problems, uh, wayward cattle, Saharan dust storms, and electricity blackouts. So these types of technologies are not going to be developed in you know, highly developed countries. They're really local problems that are um, being addressed through these design projects. And so uh, to uh, elevate the visibility of the design competition, uh, what I did was I engaged with local industry. And so I sent invitations to a variety of individuals to serve as competition judges. So we had judges from uh, Nigeria's Ministry of Industry and Technology. We had a judge from the Nigeria's largest tech accelerator and incubator, CC Hub. We had a judge, two judges from the UI School of Business. Uh, so this is, this is to enhance the collaborations within the university itself. And we also had a, a judge who was invited, uh, who was an investor uh, who provides finance to uh, Nigerian businesses. So as you can see, this panel of judges, they have the, the ability to judge the value of the projects and they can potentially direct resources to projects that have a lot of potential. And so the winner of the design competition was actually uh, down in the bottom center uh, was a student who developed a, a, an infant incubator, which even when the power went out, it had a built-in battery backup system uh, to keep a baby warm during electricity blackouts. And one other benefit of design competitions is that they increase visibility of the university and the design studios. So we had a reporter coming from the, Niger the Nigerian Tribune, one of Nigeria's most prominent newspapers, and they reported on the design competition at the university. And so design competitions can serve as a way to increase the, the visibility of the design studio and can serve as an indirect way to attract industry partnerships and potentially sponsor sponsorships as well. So this is the value that design studios bring uh, or design competitions bring for design studios. And it's great to try to attract uh, judges and uh, publicize the design competitions because there's some really exciting uh, novel technologies that are being showcased at these design competitions. Thank you, Patrick. I just want to reiterate uh, one of the things that Patrick said is that design studios are that the, the hub of the in invention in a, uh, education model. And not only um, are they the hub, but they can also give visibility to the network that exists to support this type of, uh, of innovative development. Uh, these, this can also happen at a national level. Let's hear from Will talking about how design studios connect innovation ecosystems and help elevate them um, to support and visualize these national networks. Will, connecting the tech and innovation ecosystem in Malawi, your team has led amazing work to bring together student innovators, industry partners, and the national level government of Malawi. Can you tell us more about the Malawi Innovators Design Competition, please? Sure, thank you, Matthew. Um, I'll speak briefly about how we've worked to connect the technology and innovation um, ecosystem members in Malawi. So in Malawi, the um, innovation ecosystem consists of a number of players, um, very diverse, and they're always um, interacting, um, but never really working together. And they are, they are very important uh, for technology innovation. And some of these professionals include entrepreneurs, funders, private 
private sector, the government, um, technical service providers such as intellectual property lawyers, um, contract manufacturers, and, and so much more. And so what we've done in the past year and a half is we've done a lot of work to try and bring these stakeholders together to ensure that they are conversing and identifying where there are synergies as well. We've started from the ground up and built these partnerships. Um, for example, we've built um, a partnership with the Registrar General, um, who is helping us develop IP policies for the universities and the design studios in which we work. Um, and has been, it has been such a wonderful experience for us. The Malawi environment is ripe for collaboration between stakeholders. Um, everyone in this pathway um, is eager to connect with and work with, under, with, and work with other individuals um, in this ecosystem as well. So I'll talk briefly about the Malawi Tech and Innovation um, Ecosystem Workshop, which we titled MTI, and it is an example of a program that we host in partnership with local and international organizations to bring the innovation stakeholders in Malawi to one table. So the, wor the working workshop was done with a number of goals in mind. First, to map the innovation network. Like who are the individuals um, in tech in Malawi and what do they do? and where are they in Malawi? Secondly, to conduct a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis to better understand the ecosystem. Um, it's such a diverse ecosystem, it's fairly young, um, so there's a lot of opportunity there. And then to develop a database for, of resources for both the tech um, and innovators as well. Uh, to learn who are the funders, who are the lenders, and where can one find certain resources such as specialized equipment. And lastly, to continue to build this collaborative network that we have been really trying to bring together. There is so much opportunity for collaboration, especially when it comes to uh, matters of intellectual property and um, matters of finding markets. I think the needs are the same um, across the board in that respect. And then moving on to the Malawi Innovators Design Competition, um, it is an annual platform where academics, innovators, engineers from academia, industry, and government are brought together to appreciate innovation, um, development, and trends in the areas of science, um, technology, engineering, and um, applied mathematics. Um, these community-centered innovations seek to solve real-life unmet needs and enhance um, national development in, in Malawi. And the event is jointly hosted by the Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences and also the Malawi University of Science and Technology. And so I spoke about um, MTI in the previous slide. So the MTI stakeholders came together this year to fund and support the National Design Competition in Malawi. So in addition to them being MTI stakeholders, they were also part of the organizing committee for um, the Malawi Innovators Design Competition and they also served um, as judges. I think. Um, the key organizations who were at the center of um, funding the event were the National Commission of Science and Technology, which is a government entity, the UNDP, RICE 360, uh, Malawi Bureau of Standards, which certifies all technology and innovations in Malawi, and the national construction um, industry as well, and Old Mutual. So we can start to see now the fruit of our work in that um, collaborators, um, and innovators in the ecosystem are starting to come together to host events um, and also to, to encourage young people um, to, to innovate in the sector as well. Um, I will move on to talk about the biomedical pre-service training that we do in the design studios and in our skills lab. It's a big part of the work that we do in the design studios. And here we teach biomedical engineering students from diploma to degree, how hospital equipment works, how to repair, and also to start to think about how they can design and build locally made equipment. Students take apart and repair and learn about the nest bundle of equipment. And this is important because we don't want it to be the case that the only time biomedical engineers see and work with equipment is in the healthcare facilities where they are deployed. Um, you can also imagine that this will improve healthcare outcomes in the future as well. And so following off of that, we also host a number of internship programs in the design studio um, in collaboration with our partners in the MTI, uh, MTI ecosystem. We host the Lemelson Biomedical Internship with RISE 360, where we partner with healthcare professionals, nurses, doctors, 
um, and engineers to design medical devices um, and solve local challenges. We also have the Industrial Practical Training Internship, which is an engineering depart department mandated internship that helps to solve local challenges within industry. And then we have our industrial internship as well in the design studio for our fourth year um, students as well. And because of all these of these internships and the programming um, in the design studio, we have been able to show that um, there is really value in investing in the design studio and in students because they can produce technologies that have been used in the hospitals and also that, that have been used for staff training. So for example, we have phototherapy lights that treat jaundice in uh, babies and these are used in in various hospitals in Malawi that were first developed um, in the design studio. We also have job-based cervical cancer screening training kits um, and also a number of technologies as well um, that have been developed in the design studio. In addition to this, we've done a lot of work um, during the COVID pandemic to design PPE and fabricate within the, de the design studio. So from aprons for medical professionals um, to face shields and intubation kits as well. So I think that summarizes um, the impact of the design studios. And we wouldn't be able to do it alone in Malawi. We have a number of partners who are doing this work um, beside us who are partnering with us as clinical partners and also as industrial partners to ensure that we can deliver invention education um, to all students in the, in the two universities. Thank you. Thank you, Will. I'd love to highlight a couple key aspects of uh, what Will mentioned. And in particular, these design studios and these design competitions are a starting point, both for students and faculty who can pursue meaningful design of technologies and then lead them towards real world impact. Clinical collaborations that are happening at uh, Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology have resulted in their team's bubble CPAP device winning international awards. This clinical um, collaboration has occurred with local hospitals, uh, shown at the right are uh, photographs of uh, this device actually being tested um, at DIT. And this tech translation that in Malawi and Will referenced uh, are designed by students. And then there's a burgeoning pipeline where what is developed in the classroom is eventually translated into the hospital. And we feel that this is one of the main benefits of having design studios um, in these settings. One thing that I'd like to highlight is a key component, uh, which is the faculty uh, who are helping to usher in this new method of problem solving. The ways that we engage with faculty all across uh, the world, and especially in uh, the African uh, continent, is that the faculty participate in co-development workshops. These workshops are immersive, one week long, hands-on workshops uh, where we don't just teach faculty how to use research-based practices or active learning, we actually do it. Uh, shown here um, is the result of a workshop we recently held in Tanzania before the pandemic. Uh, where we talked about active learning techniques, as well as um, did some design challenges. The impact of this faculty development has been massive. What we believe is that by helping faculty to, in, to introduce this invention education model is that we can grow more students who then become the faculty who are teaching others. And this plays into our bold vision of transforming engineering education for a generation of students in Sub-Saharan Africa. The impact of uh, invention education is massive. Just in the last six years, uh, we have impacted over 1,300 students and 650 faculty participants. This has resulted in 100 projects through internships, courses and independent opportunities, as well as 75 unique student and faculty workshops held across a host of design studios and sites. While we initially envisioned the focus of invention education on healthcare challenges, the design studios serving as a hub for invention of an entire ecosystem and the use and adoption of research-based teaching methods 
have been used by other disciplines at partner institutions inside of engineering, as well as STEM, broadly outside of healthcare. So through this model, through this model, we have seen incredible impact um, across not only sites, but also across students, faculty and communities and hospitals. And so the last question that I wanna to pose to each of our part panelists, and I'd like to hear from uh, all of them, is what is the greatest impact of invention education that you have seen at your institution? Williams, can we start with you, please? Uh, okay, thank you again, uh, Matthew. Um, to be honest, um, the idea of establishment of a design studio has been a game changer from the very first day I stepped my foot at the University of Lagos campus. And uh, just to be specific, I remember not so long ago, we committed some students to um, the annual internship program for just six weeks. And um, they had to visit the um, medical center of the university to you know, get to see the kind of problems that they are facing. And to my amazement, um, a nurse came up and made us understand that there is a tool that they actually use for supporting people with um, issues on the feet. And because it's not adjustable, um, it's always posed a challenge for them to be able to give um, patients the, 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 the kind of treatment that they have to give them. And within the six weeks, these young talents that we brought on board were able to come up with a solution that was deployed on the site to solve that specific problem. And according to the nurse, it's been 20 years of her career that she's been there. And that, um, that very device has never been in good shape all that period. So this, this goes a whole, um, the whole way to tell us the kind of impacts that the um, deployment of the design studio have on the media society. And the list goes on and on. For, for instance, um, looking at the student that I have here, for the first time, you see the drive. Because what I have been used to uh, is students having the talent, but because there is no access to this kind of spaces, there's those kind of talent and you know desire to um, profess solution dies in them with time. And by this design studio, um, they are churned up and of course, are looking forward to um, bring to life the talent that is embedded in them. Thank you, Williams. Patrick, can we hear from you? What's the greatest impact of invention education at your institution? Sure, that's a great question. I think the biggest impact of invention education was actually uh, illustrated during the design competition uh, in this, that the University of Ibadan held in December. The students who participated were so passionate and so engaged and so excited to share the hard work that they did at the competition. It didn't really matter if they won or lost. They were uh, they just enjoyed the platform to be able to share all the hard work that they had done for the better part of a year on developing these new technologies. And so what I really enjoyed was how grateful and excited the students were to be able to have a platform to share the hard work that they do. So I'm going to echo what William said and that there is a lot of talent that was showcased during the design competition. And just giving the students a platform to share and express that talent was very meaningful for me, but um, it, it really, the, the major impact is that it, the, this invention education, including the use of design competition really is meaningful for the students as well. Thank you, Patrick. And finally, let's hear from Will. Will, what's been the greatest impact of invention education in Malawi? 
Thank you, Matthew. I think because of the work we do in the design studio, the mindset of our students has been transformed. They're keen to embark on independent projects. Um, many of the winners of the Malawi um, National um, Innovators Design Competition were from the project done in the design, design studio. Four of our students have won international competitions as well. And these were students that have really gone through some rigorous design studio programming, such as internships and workshops. And workshops. So it's really been a confidence boost and an assurance that we are preparing engineering students that can develop solutions um, for real life applications. Thank you, Will. I want to echo what all three of the panelists have said and comment that in my observation, the impact of invention education has been in increasing empowerment, agency, and the authority that each member of the ecosystem has on impacting change. We see students who now believe that they can change the world and solve problems that they're now taught to see around themselves. We see faculty who are rewarded by students who are actually going out and doing things. Uh, we see improvement in hospitals with clinical outcomes. Invention education as a method provides a impactful way to solve problems locally and globally. And for, uh, for more information about ed invention education or to join the global ecosystem of individuals who are looking to solve problems, please look no further than the Invention Education Toolkit, uh, which can be found at ive-toolkit.org, which is an online platform we've built uh, through many collaborators that enables the sharing of both knowledge and accrued experience supporting the implementation of education in Sub-Saharan Africa. And this toolkit is helpful for you if you are any member of the Invention Education ecosystem, um, from students to faculty to institutions to nonprofits to governments uh, to hospitals. I want to give a Huge thank you for those of you who have been in the audience today, hearing us talk about something that makes us very proud, uh, which is transforming engineering education for a generation of African universities in order to solve local and global challenges. At this point, I'm going to stop sharing so that we can open up our, our question time. If I look in the chat, I see that uh, there is a, a question from, from Mark, and I'll read part of that. Um, wider impact beyond healthcare is interesting. In addressing local and global health challenges, uh, most of what impacts this is beyond the healthcare system. What's happening and what opportunities exist more widely? Let's hear from Williams and Patrick to provide some uh, answers in this area. Okay, thank you so much again. Um, I, I think this is a very interesting question and um, it is very important to spell out that um, the kind of services or impartation that is done at the design studios is not just um, for the healthcare alone. Um, the students and you know, the young talent that we have in the institutions are trained across board. So um, I understand very well that there are so many of the projects that have been churned out that are not necessarily just for the healthcare um, sector alone. So this, this, this kind of space is, is, a, is an environment that, um, that, that is geared towards solving solutions, I mean, solving problems across board, not just for healthcare, Hello. Patrick, would you care to share? Sure. So I guess at the University of Ibadan, um, one of the major local industries is agriculture and food processing. And so we've actually engaged with some local business leaders and investors uh, who are very interested in, in seeing how the design studio can be used to jumpstart new innovations and connect talent developed at the design studio uh, to uh, stakeholders in the agricultural sector. So uh, 
the University of Iban Design Studio is engaging with the local business community to meet the needs of the local industries. And this is apart from um, healthcare specifically. Although I must say that um, a lot of the work that we have done thus far is engaging with a local federal hospital and uh, developing projects that meet the specific needs of uh, problems that are identified by uh, clinicians at the hospital as well. So uh, healthcare does play a major role, but uh, engaging with local industry like the agricultural and food processing sector is, is a direction that the design studio is, is certainly going towards, yes. Will, the design studios in Malawi have existed for quite some time. Could you also comment on some of the projects that have been run outside of the health areas? Thank you, Matthew. Um, I think Malawi is so uniquely placed in that there's so much opportunity to in integrate technology and more so locally developed technology. I think many of our industrial partners are looking to us for automation of their food packaging processes. And because Malawi relies so heavily on agriculture, the government is also keen to work with us to develop technologies that make agriculture more efficient. And we've developed um, different programs. For example, we've developed drones to detect disease and crops, for example, on the tea and tobacco farms. Um, a drone will detect disease on the crops, and then another drone will go in to spray insecticide only on the disease areas. And all this is being led by students who are recent graduates and working in the design studio um, to work on their algorithms and also to build their drones from scratch in the design studio as well. Thank you all. If anybody has any questions, if you could raise your hand or uh, type into the chat, we'd love to talk more about invention education and design studios. Uh, Natalie, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question to the panelists? I don't know if we can we can hear Natalie, so I'll uh, I'll read her question. How do the students become involved in these design competitions? Is it competitive, how they are chosen, or is it open to anyone who hears about it? Um, Patrick Williams and Will, would you care to comment on that? Absolutely. Yes, I will comment. Oh, go ahead, Will. Sorry, Patrick. Um, for the Malawi Innovators Design Competition, we send out a call for applications eight months before the competition. Um, everybody in Malawi is welcome to apply. Um, it's open to all individual students, community in innovators, and professionals. Um, once we send out a community, um, the application, we have a panel that selects um, projects that they feel are at the standard um, desired by the competition. And from then on, we work with the people in our innovation ecosystem network in the various hubs around the country to improve on the on the projects that have been selected so that by the time um, they are exhibiting um, at the national design competition they have at least um, uh, a, a, a medium fidelity prototype thank you okay yeah and at the university of Ibadan for the design competition uh, we also sent out a call for proposals. Uh, this was restricted only to the different departments within the College of Engineering at the University of Ibadan. And so, and, and furthermore, only final year undergraduate students as well as graduate students were eligible to apply for the competition and submit their projects. We had a small screening uh, process beforehand to see what projects would uh, had the highest potential for success for the design competition. But I do wanna say that for uh, this 
this year's 2022 design competition, we do want to widen the pool of eligible participants to include other, other institutes of higher education within Oyo State where uh, Ibadan is located. And so we're going to extend our call for proposals to other universities and polytechnic colleges. Um, so just to, I think we all follow the same model of uh, adopting this kind of pro programs. For instance, with um, we currently have an advert out now, which is scooped um, um, for just the university wide. So we are inviting, um, you know, projects from students of the university. And um, what the plan is, is that as we progress, we can expand it beyond the, the institution. And of course, probably um, think of going statewide in terms of um, all the institutions that are located in the, uh, in the Lagos states, Nigeria. So it, it, it depends on the scope that we tend to um, capture. So for, for the first one that we are embarking on, we are doing it only campus-wise. Thank you, panelists. Uh, we have a question from uh, Tamin. Would you mind unmuting yourself and asking your question? Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Matthew, uh, for... Uh, uh, hosting this event, like uh, organizing this event. Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, first, uh, I just uh, to give my to give you my background. I am a Peace Corps volunteer, served in Ethiopia 2016-2018, and since uh, after I finished my Peace Corps service, I will work uh, in uh, continue my service in that area. So. Uh, I'm currently like a master in science uh, and technology for innovation in global development uh, at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, uh, WPI. Uh, uh, is uh, one hour, I just back in course, two, three days, I went there for the uh, in-person class. Uh, so one the courses I'm taking right now, design studio, it, it just a kind of like, uh integrating my field experience to master uh, uh on both research development and research uh, engineering field i want to like uh, implement it in, in sub-saharan africa in general so is it uh any uh because i have as I say, uh, from the same school from wpi i have biomedical engineering is a kind of a developmental biomedical focus, which is more uh, developmental engineering concept I wanted to explore, not just for the master's program, just like for long learning process. Uh, uh, what advice do you have and in what I could support like uh, on the global uh, development and the global integration? That's what I want to ask. Wow, what a great question. Let's hear from um, some of the design studio managers about what opportunities they see for someone such as yourself that they could point you to. Patrick, would you mind starting? Sure. Uh, and hi, Tamina. I, I, I think we've been in contact before, so yes. it's great to, to hear you, from you. Uh, yeah. By the way, it's your uh, Patrick. I appreciate uh, the, I, I, I received this link uh, on your LinkedIn. So thank oh. you for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so um, a great, I think what we've actually done a lot of hard work developing the invention education toolkit and the link has been provided, I think earlier in the chat, yeah. but I would re recommend going to the invention education toolkit where uh, the uh, Rice University is, and all the other design studios have developed a lot of content to provide almost a blueprint for how to enhance invention education at other institutes of higher education, um, specifically in Sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, we have everything from equipment lists to blueprints for design studios, um, some uh, how to engage with faculty and enhance uh, curriculum uh, in invention education. So I'd really uh, use this toolkit as well. And then furthermore, you can uh, feel free to reach out um, to me personally and we can, uh, I'd be uh, happy to um, help, I guess, uh, 
yeah, stay in contact and just yeah. uh, mm -hmm. um, in enhance your network as well. And we can, we can talk offline as well. All right, thank you. Uh, just to give like a background, what I'm kind of like uh, to apply the transdisciplinary uh, uh, project uh, project based learning because the BKI had that, and then they have in Ghana uh, doing micro flash toilet, and then now I'm kind of like uh, they started. I worked as technical advisor for that uh, 2019 2020 uh, since then, and then now bringing that idea to the purpose for like the human waste for the other purpose for the soil fertilizer. So they, some biotechnology department from WPI, they noticed this is a good opportunity to explore like in uh, between Ghana and in Ethiopia because in uh, Kenya, they have the same um, uh, project. Um, the company I work is uh, Royal Island based uh, and then I, Got connected through the Peace Corps uh, volunteer. Uh, just they hired me as like a consultant there. So the other issue, the biomechanics team in WPI, they see like the superstructural design for people who do not have uh, uh, fully access to use a bathroom. So for the uh, they wanted to refine the the superstructural uh, of the, the toilet. So we get kind of like more inclusive for people with disabilities uh, and then more ergonomically friendly uh, kind of thing say they want to define. So it's a kind of uh, a good way to create like a global education uh, and the learning and development program. So it's a kind of, yeah, thank you. I will follow up with that and then I kind of, uh, learn more on that thing. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Let's move on to uh, Nicole Allen, uh, who has a question. Nicole, would you mind unmuting yourself and asking? Hi, everyone. Um, first, thank you so much for arranging this opportunity and to the panelists. Um, and Tamane, I, I just wanted to, to give a shout out to Peace Corps Ethiopia. I was there in 2009. Um, so always wonderful to bump into another Ethiopia Return Peace Corps volunteer. So I did add my two questions in the chat. Um, so at Yale University, we've just in the last couple of years introduced an innovation and entrepreneurship program with a focus on public health and global health. Um, so obviously very interdisciplinary global health as a field. Um, and, and we're thinking now about how we can engage outside of just the public health um, activities. So I'm really interested to know more about once you have a, a really solid um, MVP or, or the innovators have gotten to that point where they're moving into commercialization, how do you support them as they're moving into um, commercialization from inventor to entrepreneur? Um, and then my other question is you, you mentioned really briefly, and I apologize, I don't remember which presenter mentioned the faculty capacity building piece. And I was wondering if you could comment a little bit more about how you cultivate that um, invention and innovation culture beyond engineering. Um, are you working with just engineering faculty? Or are you really introducing this concept of in, um, invention education to other disciplines to, to cultivate that interconnectivity that's so important for these areas? Nicole, thank you for your question. Will, would you mind talking a little bit about the ecosystem in Malawi and how inventors and innovators are supported after they uh, come up with their idea and through to commercialization? And then Nicole, we can talk about the faculty piece momentarily. Yes, thank you. Happy to respond to that. Um, I think a big part of sustainability of the design studios in Malawi is working with other local hubs who have the entrepreneurship and um, commercialization expertise um, to take uh, our students through um, a program where they can access commercialization pathways. Um, we also have a number of programs in the design studio that are entrepreneurship focused, led by Dr. Doug Sonia Humbi, where students are taken through um, 
a process where they learn how to develop um, a business plan, how to assess what their landscape in which they want to compete looks like, what, um, what IP issues they have to consider. We connect them with um, our IP lawyer in Malawi, um, who is currently doing um, all this work pro bono and giving students advice on what um, regulations in the IP space in Malawi look like. So a lot of the work that we do on um, commercializing devices um, really relies heavily on our other stakeholders. Thank you. Nicole, on the faculty side, um, the workshops that we've run over the past um, uh, seven plus years have, uh, have ranged in topics from um, active learning to curriculum uh, design uh, to um, engineering design uh, processes. And this has included faculty largely from um, STEM uh, fields. Uh, but the transformative changes in teaching style and design of classes um, has gained interest outside of just healthcare contacts and contexts. And um, as a result of this, uh, there's interest um, from faculty in a range of, uh, of departments in the university. Hopefully that answers your question. Yes, thank you, Will, and um, thank you, Matthew, for, for those responses. I really appreciate the opportunity. We have just a few minutes left in this session. Uh, I wonder if the um, if the panelists might offer uh, just a little bit of a closure based on um, some of their key points and um, things that they want you to walk away from today remembering about this particular presentation. Will, could I ask okay. you to start this time? Sorry, Matthew, I lost my connection um, a bit there. May you please repeat that? Sure. Um, could you summarize some of the key points that you want people to walk away from today, remembering as they go into their weekend? Sure, thank you. I think the, one of the most important things for me is that for all of us to remember that in some ways we are part of the technology and innovation pathway, either as consumers, users, um, uh, some of us have specialized expertise that could help um, students in the work that they do. So asking yourself, how can I get involved um, in education of university students um, to help them better understand engineering, innovation, and technology? Thank you. Williams, would you care to share? Okay, thank you. Um, I would just want to speak a little bit about the first question of Nico. Um, I think we most of most of um, the universities that we partner with, um, for instance, in the University of Lagos, we do have centers who are actually um, specifically set up to see to the commercialization part of you know, designs. So they look more into that. So we have this level of collaboration with them as well. So that is internal for the university. Um, in terms of uh, takeaway, I strongly believe that the concept of invention of invention education is the way to go. And just like Will pointed out, it requires everybody to be involved. That is very, very important. Um, and who, it, for now, it's only few universities that are actually um, embracing this. And of course, the impact speaks for itself. So I think it is high time that um, other institutions across board on the continent embrace this as a, as a culture to you know, drive the technological needs of the continent. Thank you. Thank you, Williams. And Patrick. Sure, so yeah, invention education and spinning out new products uh, and services out of universities. It's a tried and true method of development that's happened in the United States and uh, across uh, across many developed countries. And so this type of model is uh, being replicated now in Sub-Saharan Africa. And so it's not just these design studios that are important, it's actually, and they are critical, but it's also in a greater ecosystem. As Nicole mentioned, we need 
uh, to enhance co uh, collaborations with the investment sector and uh, local industries as well, um, schools of business and uh, um, other important stakeholders to bring these new technologies uh, to the marketplace. And so I just wanna say that like these, this method of invention education is uh, a, a key, plays a key role in the development of strategies of these uh, developing countries. Thank you to all of our panelists. And uh, at this point, I'd like to close the session and thank you for joining uh, this talk on transforming engineering education in African universities to solve local and global challenges. Uh, this presentation was brought to you by Rice360, Nest 360, as well as the design studios that are uh, supporting this effort. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day and evening.